Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Form BX257, and I'm here to bring you another vintage G.I. Joe toy review. But instead of the 1985 vehicles, as I was uh, planning on doing, I'm going to do a figure for the first time. The Crimson Guard Commanders, Tomax and Zema. I figured I'd go with something like a figure because I'm going to be busy for the next couple of weeks and I might miss her one or two weeks uh, of doing a review. Hadn't really planned on that, but well, this was one of the requests, and it's a 1985 uh, issue, so it goes with it well within uh, what I was planning on doing anyway. The Crimson Guard came in their own special package. It's not quite a box, it's not quite a card. It had quite a bit of uh, unique art. All over it and it just doesn't have a, uh, a figure roaster on the back. I'm actually quite surprised that the flag points is only one because the price point of this figure wouldn't have been quite twice that of a normal single figure but it was definitely more. My card is a Canadian version as with French and English but it's exactly the same as both the American, Canadian, and the uh, UK Action Force version. It has the mirrored sides, which emphasizes the uh, mirror nature, or twin nature, of the um, characters. And here is Tomax and Zaymont, the Crimson Guard Commanders. They came with two pistols, which were exactly the same, and something called a sky hook. That's this thing right here. It's, uh, well, I guess it's meant to go this way. And I have the um, the black uh, rope uh, kind of uh, stored, uh, coiled around it, which I'll demonstrate in a bit. Now, admittedly, I don't have the greatest impression of Tomax and Zaymot initially. Uh, I, I sort of stopped playing with, uh, well, not playing with toys, but I, I certainly stopped buying um, toys around 1985, so I never got familiar with any of the 85 characters. What I know of them was either from the cartoon, the comic book, or the commercials. And when Tomax and Zaymont were first introduced, of course, uh, they were introduced in uh, kind of a bizarre fashion. They were uh, attacking G.I. Joe at a circus. And they were doing all kinds of crazy acrobatics, and they were riding around on a ferret, the um, Cobra ATV. Uh, yeah, so that, that didn't give me the best impression of them. That that was actually an ad for the original G.I. Joe comic book uh, number 37 back in 1985. That would have debuted a little bit before the figures would have hit the shelves themselves. and Certainly before the characters would have appeared in the, uh, the, uh, the cartoon uh, in September of 1985. I'll just take one of these rather large, uh, one of these rather large pistols. Uh, quite detailed. They almost look like submachine guns, really. But uh, you no, know, they're pis they're gigantic pistols with gigantic scopes on them and rather large handles. With this odd little bit down here. Which kind of reminds me of an air pistol, sort of like an air pistol uh, lever, but uh, whatever. If you, of course, uh, Tomax and Zaymon are themselves uh, completely mirror images of themselves, so they share no parts um, between each other. They're the exact same mold, but just reversed. I think that's quite clever. However, uh, my impressions of uh, Tomax and Zaymont have definitely, definitely changed. 
um, the fact of the matter is, is that they were never emphasized as Crimson Guard commanders, at least not to me anyway. In, in no media form did they seem um, to be in control of that uh, elite subgroup of Cobra. And I think that an emphasis on that certainly would have raised them up, in my opinion. That being said, they're excellent looking figures. And of course, here's a demonstration of the, how the Skyhook works. Now, one final note on how the Crimson Guards were originally sold. In the uh, 1985 Sears catalog, at least in Canada, as you can see here, the CAT and the SMS were both sold uh, with Tomax and Zamot included if you paid a bit extra, a sort of ensemble set, if you will. Now, some Canadian collectors claim that inside one of these boxes is one of these, pretty much sealed inside the box, rather than just, you know, the card stuff with this thing and both of them being loose. I don't believe a carded um, Tomax and Zamar could actually fit inside this, uh, much less the cap, which was a smaller box even still. Tomax and Zamar would have come bagged with like a red back card if it was indeed sealed within the box. Well that was my review of Tomax and Zamot. Uh, thank you for viewing my video and I'll see you whenever I get the time to do my next review.